Hello there once again. Uh, it's still Christmas today, so I decided to change my background to uh, look more, <coughs> to have more of the Christmas uh, feel <coughs> to it. This, uh, as you know, is uh, not in uh, uh, Holland or anywhere like that. This is, this is in, uh, well, what's Germany now? But it used to be Bavaria, and is the castle of uh, the former crazy crazy king uh, of Bavaria, um, Ludwig, Ludwig the Mad King of Bavaria. And uh, but anyway, it looks sort of, sort of Christmassy, and it's, it's the most Christmassy thing I have. Now, according to the title of this video. Uh, we are going to move now into another phase and uh, I've cleaned everything up here that is uh, just there's no leftover libs or anything I'm going to build do a build from scratch and I'm going to show you what I have at the moment uh, which is pretty much we're ready to it's not a unit test anymore it actually does some stuff it even looks like a real program. All right, now here's the, the cleaning I did. Is uh, I separated these things into um, uh, these new files to do different things. One thing just handles some um, WinProc messages that aren't coming in through the callbacks. This handles the callback. Uh, so WM create is not a callback. I still have the same as before. Uh, this, uh, if I have a chance, I'll explain this later. <laughs> uh, and then here, this this is the all of the code to do with the recent item list. Re uh, these types of lists. But see, this is this is a good way to do it. Yeah, I might do something like that uh, later on. Uh, but anyway, this should build in its current form. You were looking at the header file. So what I have is first the list. I used to have a list of strings, and uh, and then I realized that uh, well, that's also data duplication because we have a list that uh, MRU most recently used items list and that's in here right so we don't need an extra variable to get you know have things mixed up it's, it's always available to be read and written to in the registry so I got rid of that variable um, so now this here just initialize uh, clear from now what this does is remove any in instances of this string or sorry this file from the list now it should be a string match but there is the possibility of errors so it'll it'll clear out anything that is uh, the same file. Now, what do I mean by the same file? Uh, let me show you an example of something that is the same file, but I wouldn't clear it out. Oh, I changed the icon too. That, that's when you know it's starting to turn into a project. Uh, I showed you at one point that I have a program that makes hard links, right? Uh, let's see, it's got a temp here. Try and find some. Okay, I think we even use this directory for a similar type of test. Now, here's a directory with subdirectories, and uh, well, there's nothing, nothing in there. I'm going to have to make a copy of this. There we go. Now it's got lots of. Lots of stuff in there. 
and again right now this is on my D drive it currently has it's always going down uh, 134 4.4 gigs so now I'm going to show you if I'm going to select I don't know this 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 so these three items and that is a total of 500 megs. Okay, and I have a program that takes these, and I can make a hard link. And I don't know um, what it's got for default here. Nothing. It's staying in temp. Uh, let's say I decided I want to put this. Uh, all of that stuff in um, dogs. What was it? Okay, two bitmaps in that folder. Okay, I say save. So my my I didn't lose 500 megs or anything there. Now let's see if there are, where they are. In dogs. Here are those two bitmaps. And here's that test folder. So these are all hard links. Those are here. These are some MP3s and some pictures and so on. Okay. So now the question is: It happens to be the case that this file is the same as the one under temp, but I wouldn't want to get rid. If I opened one of these. And then another, uh, even though they're the same file, I, I want to add a new entry in the, in the list because, for instance, one might want to use an editor to see if they really are the same. And if you take away the, uh, the, the thing from the list, then you wouldn't be able to do that. So, actually, I should have had some document files, text files. <coughs> However, if, um, if, I, if, if I find that it shouldn't happen, but if I find something that's on a subst, something that's on a substitute drive, then I, I will delete. So it's the possibility of extra entries. Or somebody can just go in the registry and add similar entries and you know, clear them all out. Uh, so that's what that does. <coughs> So any instance of this particular file at this particular, loca particular location, <coughs> uh, even if there, are, even if it's a copy of another file, take it out of the list. So that's what this does. This is a simple adding to the front of the list, and this sets basically set list to menu, the pop pop up menu. So now that that's all in one file here. So here's the init. I changed all these things to have the files now. Max. And then there's a default. I have a deep that's five here. Oops. I should say five. Uh, I did a search replace of five with this number, with this um, string. That should be okay. Another thing I did was I took that file open uh, function and I moved it out of common, and in, well, in still in common, but I put it under the reg class. So. Uh, because whenever I'm using that thing, it, it, all, it, ta it takes a reference to a registry object, right? So I'm always going to have to have a registry thing. So I, might, I thought I might as well just move it in here uh, as a, reg, a function of reg, a reg object. You open a file and it uses the current registry. Uh, for saving things if necessary. 
the defaults are indicated here. Default, if, if you don't specify a filter, it's going to be all files star dot star. And if you don't specify a name for the dialog, it'll be file open. Okay, so these are things you can override, and I do override at least the filter. Okay, so that means that the the actual opening of the file uh, looks a lot cleaner. Not only have used to be a great big long line, you know, it's just a few neat things. Uh, and uh, some other little nitty nit, nitty thing. Uh, <laughs> you can't really read it there, but that's that's a three. I don't know. I think I can zoom. I haven't tried this before. Well, I'll try it later. I'll just run the program first. So now, let's see, Notepad cubed. Actually, if I if I put this in the system tray, it looks better. And then you get the icon down here. Uh, now I can open things, and it indicates now to me if it's read only or not. If I can edit this file, uh, if something is not read only, like this here, it, it doesn't say read only. This is a file with all, all my, my crazy characters that I use. Uh, now, if here's the list that's already full. If I go and open something else, I'm going to lose whatever was the last thing. Let's see what that was first. I'm going to lose this one. All w no, I don't want to lose that one. Put that at the top. There's a reason why I want this. Uh, these files are almost exactly the same. But this one stops here when I read it. And that's something I'm curious about fixing. I know why, believe it or not. This file, at that position, I found out by using the debug program, has an end of file character of a 1B or 1. 1A or 2A or whatever that end of file character is from way way back it has one and, and I finally I, I got rid of it I, I opened this up with the debug program I found out where the character was and replaced it with a, a tab I, I guess it was this one no it was here uh, and once I got rid of that, now it reads the whole file. Now that's very odd because Notepad, the real, the other Notepad, uh, can open both of them, this one or the, yeah, the other one. Which is that? Here. See? Now I'm guessing that the reason why uh, the, real, the other notepad can do that is because of the open mode, the open mode, and the editing part, whatever file, this should maybe be called file stuff uh, uh, move this make another file but we're almost ready to change projects uh, I use a f open and that's this mode here I've been using a te the text mode right a text mode one or, or another there's no B here uh, now, I, the help seemed to indicate that I have to do that, but I think that if I change this, if I add a B 
so uh, open mode binary it's still going to work because the function that I'm calling is a stream to read it is a stream type function and uh, uh, in binary format well when I open it in text format what I think happens internally is it sees that end of file character and cuts it off and it's got nothing to do with f get s but if I'm if I open it in binary format it won't get cut off in the initial when it's initially read and um, but then I can still use the streamy read functions I'm guessing, but I'm not going to, that's, that'll be in real time now. Now, also, um, there's the fact that we can't actually really edit anything. You know, we, can, we can type, but we can't do copy and paste. It doesn't work. Now, that I, I think is going to be very easy because um, because of this uh, class, this uh, class I made based on C edit again stolen from NFC. NFC is so great for that, and so I want to show you this class first before taking staff and moving stuff. <clears throat> now it's just one of my standard control. I haven't really done much with it. This is almost direct copy from MFC. Now how, how do these how are they implementing these functions? You'll you'll see that all this does for you really all of these implementations are through a macro that I've written here and all these macros do are make an assertion and then do a send message with one or two parameters okay so it's all all of this stuff is send message using send message uh, now in a couple cases there's some extra processing like um, it, there's this get line, which I, I definitely don't want to use this interface, so I should have made those private uh, here. I think there, there was a comment here, but that comment I didn't. Rather, I know here it is. See, we don't want to have to rely on this comment. The first word in the buffer has to contain the size of the buffer. <laughs> okay. We won't rely on that. Make it simple. Get line. It'll just return you a, a string, or you pass in a reference to a string, and it'll handle the details. The rest of them are just send message, like uh, you know, copy. Just sends wm copy to the edit control. So actually, what? Well, what we can do quickly is uh, let's just see if it works. We've got a couple of them. What we need: copy, cut, paste. Okay. Let's, let's just try them. Oh, well, no. That's, but that's not. That's what we have with our editor. But um, <clears throat> uh, we also have those in our menus. Right? So, cut, copy, and paste. Um, so, here's file, here's help. You could edit here. Find the new guy. So, according to theory, this should be copy, cut, huh? 
Okay, so now our program should have the ability to do cut, copy, and paste because of the accelerators. And we just pass those straight through to this, which is just sending a Windows message. Let's see if it works. I'm going to do uh, Control X. Oh, that worked. It cut it. So that should be in the key in the uh, that should be in the uh, clipboard. So I'm going to do Control V here. Then it work. See. So now we have some editing. See, I can I can edit now. Now I don't have control insert or anything. Control homework. Well, how about we have two? We didn't. Put, I didn't put delete, so that's not going to delete's not going to work. I'd have. I would have to use cut if I want to do a delete. Okay. Now all I don't have control Z. It's not working either. It's, I didn't put any for it. But uh, I put these three, and these, so now these three are working. So now this, I get rid of that box, and, and I start doing things like this. Then this is this is no longer a unit test. This is a working product. Okay, so we're not saving or anything, but we're opening files. Uh, we have a recent file list. Right? Uh, we have information up here. We've got an icon. That's a pro That's enough to say that it's a pro product to me. So I'll check this in. Which doesn't really matter because now I'm going to dump this. It's best to close this and do this part by hand. I can delete these, by the way. They don't, they don't get. Oh, they won't get uh, destroyed. But you'll notice the temp. Now these things have a little lock on them, and this too, they should all have locks. Not the directories because those don't, weren't linked in any way. I created those manually. But all these files now have a lock on them, and that always happens when you take a linked file and, put, and delete it. But if I empty the recycle bin, the little locks don't go away. The, st the stuff's still there, right? It hasn't been deleted, but the and the reference count should be one now. But the little locks stay. I don't know how to get rid of them. Uh, so now those will always have locks, unless, unless I get rid of it. I don't really want those anyway. What was that? Okay. Uh, so, tips. Now we're going to go from uh, unit test to product. I don't know what I was thinking was in the we got kind of too many of these things here, and I'd like to bring add another level to this utils, like um, console utilities and Windows utilities, and that would be very convenient because uh, this thing is already at a, a second level, right? So it'd be at the, it would be at the same level, and I don't have to change anything. So actually, I'm going to make a new folder called um, console. And another one called window. I'm not going to move everything. Okay. Now then. I'll move them eventually, but they're, they're all under source control, so I can't just 
willy-nilly move them. I have to move them in, in the source control uh, database. <coughs> but this, for this I'm okay because I haven't put it in yet. So that's what would be under Windows. And now when I use the copy project utility, that'll remove the source control binding and give it a new ID. So it's no longer a test, it's called Notepad Cube. So Notepad Cube. Call it that. Or club. <laughs> I used to have a math teacher who instead of saying cube he would, he would always say club for to the power of three. And you know that's not so even uh Alpad Notepad Q. I like the name Q. I was thinking of Notepad you know, you know what I mean? like that Notepad plus plus I have a guy. And I was thinking of adding uh, more maybe more pluses, but I'm kind of getting bored with the plus. I'm gonna start going with powers now. Okay, so well, I don't really need this anymore. In fact, I don't want it there because it's dangerous. <laughs> That's why I closed the the compiler because I'm afraid of it finding, uh, trying to guess what's best to do. Uh, so here's our project. Right? Now it's all the same, and. Uh, it expects to be at this level already, one level more than the usual, so it should be able to compile and run. Uh, well, uh, this thing, you tell. Windows so this is gonna change. Everything's gonna go into one or the other of the directory. Okay, I'll get rid of this one. And we might have to refer back to it. Okay, so now everything we have is a search replace that happens. Sometimes that will mess things up. Notepad cubed is the name of our class, but I'd actually like that in our case of something that doesn't look class like enough. Anyway, maybe I'll just call this main window or something. Oh no, progr the program. Oops. Yeah. Current project. No, this is not going to be right. It's okay, easy enough to fix that. And I'm going to call it the others. Uh, that's fine. My internal name, product name. I want this to actually have the three in it. <coughs> that's that's a that particular character is it's fine. And it's an ANSI character. And its uh, code is 179. That's how I just entered it again. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. 
Okay. Can I just change these? Oh, and then I see it okay. It's only the H one. Can't find. What did I say? Let's do it manually. Okay, I, I don't know if this is going to compile. Uh, let me just look at that regress. Yeah, okay, that's still what I have. Let's try. Okay, that won't be the output file name. You know, this gets cut off in the only way. It's not a basic frame. Notepad cube. Just like Notepad plus plus, but plus. But, um, <clears throat> better. <laughs> I don't know. Not this. So, um, all right. <clears throat> you know, I could have done this. Resource editor. A little bit afraid. What's it going to do in there? What does it currently say? Okay, I have a copy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Accelerators. Like one. We got a menu. I just want to see the word in the book. Where it looks right. Okay. Now, let's see what it did. Is there anything? No, everything's the same. All right, try and build it. Okay, looks fine. I'm going to try and run it. No. We're done. Oops. Okay. Now the reason why we lost our list is because we're using a different registry key. The, regis the registry key based on the... Oh, probably shouldn't use that name. <laughs> but let's see what we got here. Here it is. Oh, the registry is fine looking. 
back hair again, so no problem. Should work okay. Uh, let's see if we can open that file. And get rid of that box. Easier to find uh, so the first time through. And source code. See if there are some of those things I was telling you about. Okay. Now I, I know that that's got to be working because. It's not coming from any variable. It has to be in the registry. That's where I'm not storing anything anywhere else. It's got to be in there somewhere. Yeah. Here, uh, it's our last open directory. Here's our file list. Uh, here's our max entries. Five, which we can adjust. If we want six, we can change this to a six. Uh, yeah. Now, I got this file. I am curious to see if that's the answer. Let's see. Change, close all windows. That's uh yeah. Well, I'll add a new file. <clears throat> I just want to try and put a B here and see what happens. And I would have to do similar thing. Well, not really for for uh, an ANSI build. It wouldn't matter. Now, according to theory, well, first let's see if a regular thing works. No, it didn't work. I see. Okay. So it's got to be tech. It's got to be this tech mode. Now, somehow, this other notepad is ignoring those and those and the file pairs. Characters. It's able to tell the stream thing. Actually, that should that should have been in my history. Yeah, so now it worked. This works, but this other one that has the one uh, A or whatever the end of file thing doesn't work. You can see it. Uh, all right, so, all W cards, is that 8.3? No. Yeah. I think it's this one, 1A. One See now, and also it's got this weird old thing. See these ones here? Now, I don't know what these characters are, but they shouldn't be here. Because the way I created this file was uh, I wanted to get all the Unicode, ca all Unicode characters there are. So I just, you know, got 64,000 characters, and I started from 1, not 0, to uh, 64,000 then just dump them into a file uh, and uh, then I put in um, and I wrote them out as uh, word values right and then I uh, I manually entered in I think the byte order maybe somehow I opened it maybe with notepad plus plus and I put it in the file, and then I said, save as um, UTF-8. And then I, now I, I changed that UTF-8 back, because I thought maybe it was that was the problem. So I changed it back to Unicode, and now it's got these weird characters in it. I think it's 
Well, how many are there? One, two. Anyway, these weirdo characters are in there somewhere. So, anyway. I think 1A is in the bottom, if I recall. What's that thing called? Um, uh, in. Okay. No. In. Dogs. I have a patch file to bring up the table. Anyway. D. So D. D means D bug. So enter one thirty two, right? Put another tab. Okay. Now if, if that's the one, one A, then it should work. And work. See? So it, it really does work the end the file thing. Now there's a weird character in here that um well it looks like it's there but it's probably not. You you can hit backspace ten three three or four times and nothing happens. And I think that's related to those first two characters. I don't know. One thing I suppose you could do is uh, before opening the file, you could open the file in binary mode and just scan for a, a 1A, right? And then remember the offset where the 1As were, right? You shouldn't have them anyway for a text editor. You could, re but Notepad opens it. Notepad opens it. And it's saving it back. And it has to be using a screen read for the tra character translation. So how would you do that? You could replace them all with... Just get rid of them. Remember where they were. If they get overwritten. Somehow you'd have to... Replace them with some kind of invisible character, I guess. Maybe that's why I'm getting these weirdo invisible characters. And then somehow, then at the end, go through and replace them back. You got 64,000 cho choices, right? Oh. Okay, so now if I check this in, they're going to end up in the database. The source I need a visual source say uh, details it should be in, it should have made a directory. So there it is, that's the the correct place. And what I want to do is take all the rest of these and split them into one or the other of those two categories. That'll be a big job I'm on my own. Okay, so now we don't know the answer to that question. We do know that we can do any of those simple edit commands we have, we can implement easily. This is the header file. So we've got cut, copy, paste. Let's see what else we can get for free out of this. Oh, how did I find these, by the way? You're probably asking yourself. Let me see. Okay, well, I'll get into this next time. Uh, but first, let me show you how, how to um, find these all of these, these functions. And there's nothing you're not they're not giving you any. There's nothing for free here, right? You still have to figure out how they work. But the advantage is a you can put it in the class form, and b it tells you which which messages you should be looking for. The help system is not very <laughs> helpful when it comes to finding out what you ought to know, you know, like, uh, 
why do I, you know, why the two set cells and all that stuff? But anyway, uh, and um, it's very simple. I mean, I'll go through it quicker actually this time. You take you take the ver the MFC version of the thing that you want. In my case, it replaces TS with a C. Okay, if you don't know the name, you can use the help, and maybe you'll find the one that you want. And then do a find in files uh, in your visual C++ include directories, which in, this stands for the, also the source code, CRT and MFC source code and everything. Uh, recursive search including the, uh, at all possible types. You could say start at star, I guess. And you do a search. And eventually you're going to find the thing that you want. For instance, class. This would be a good first ser search for that first to get the definition of a class. And here's the class. Okay. For C edit. It's not very big. The whole thing goes from here, and not scrolling very quickly, to there. Not much. And then, eventually, you're going to find the definitions, and here they all are. We usually start with this, AFX in line, and they're, and they're not in header files, they're in INL inline files. But what, what? That's not the one I want. Here, edit. So you find the first one and just select it all to get to the to get to the end. Not very far. Copy it. Paste it in your own project. Replace the names. And if you if you like me, I like to put this all use macro for, to make things. Uh, line up more compact and see better. <clears throat> All I see here is the um, well, the, the most important thing the, uh, because this is how you're going to bring up the help, right? You could also use the NFC help, but um, the, the message that corresponds with the function whatever that function does. You can see them easily in this list. Uh, but for avoid things, uh, there's no return code, no return value. So really, if I was smart, I would line this up like this. So that so yeah, See all of the messages lined up. So that's what I really have. that's the thing I care about the most. What's the message that's sent? Right? But let me do that. Doesn't matter what scroll about the end. More. See now I've got a nice list listing of the Windows messages associated with those uh, functions. Yeah. So now, see what and what that does for you with these two. So what this does for you, as I've explained before, is, is it gives you basically a list of the things that you should be looking at. You know, it's sort of an overview, internal overview. What are these for? Undo, 
clear? <clears throat> I think we have clear. So, well, let's see what have we got available for our accelerator. We done cut, copy, and paste. And I'll just copy them all in there. Okay, so I'm going to count that, count that, and that. Okay, <clears throat> now clear. I don't know about five. We're not going to do this or this. We will do repeat. Select all. I think it's control A. I have select all. What does that here have? Oh, clear. That's delete. Where's delete? Oh, clear. It's called clear. Okay. okay. I called it clear. Why? So that I would know. <laughs> I would know what, where to where to go. Now clear all. This is another here for that. So that undo. So that's that. That's the this 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 and undo. Five functions and we have five. Clear all. I think I have an accelerator for it. I've select all. Control A. Delete. Paste. Undo. Redo. We have to. Uh, why is we no redo in here? There must be a redo in the edit edit thing. Anyway, let's see something like this. No, I think I'm not handling the focus correctly. So I'm just going to press the delete key and that work. Control Z, work. See? We have an editor. So we're getting there. Now we just need to be able to do these things, uh, and these things, and I haven't done that yet. As you know, note, you will no doubt have noticed. Uh, I'm done with this tutorial. But um, next, uh, I want to. Well, I'll do in the meanwhile before the next one. I'll add, uh, I have a saved version of this, and I've decided that um, it, it's not going to remember. Something, for some programs, it's good to remember where the last save was. An example is, in particular, the one I just showed you. Like, um, I was... Uh, looking for an icon, right? And I, I have a great big directory with icon, icons in here. Right? Now it goes through here and I'd say, well, I'm, hmm, you know, maybe this one and then I would say make link instead of moving it and, uh, you know, just temp Okay. Anyway, now I want it. I want it to. If I find another one I like, you know, I want it to go in the same place. Right? I don't. I don't want to be 
This is a, an example of a program where you do want to remember the last save place. Because I'm not opening the file, I'm moving it, right? And this is a program that moves things. In that case, it, it does make sense. But in the case of an editor, uh, you open files and then you save them. So therefore, it should, it, it should um, the first place it should go is the current directory where you open the file. Uh, because it, it, it always happens. So let me take an example. I have this music I listen to. And I make these playlists. Right? So I don't know. Uh, Patsy Klein. You know, I go in here and uh, you know, I start one up and pause and uh, get up the playlist and then I have to select some songs add them to the playlist, right? Now, okay, now I want to just uh, save as and I, I want to put them all you know, here as, and I would like it to remember that but I can't, right? Because it turns out that the last time I did something with it, with this program. I saved to this directory, right? And as it's never the right place. Like now, I'm going to go to save this to Patsy Klein directory, and I'll be okay for a while. But usually, I only want to do it once. Uh, and then I, I'll go like a, to. A, completely different uh, directory like videos or something and try to make a video playlist right so yeah um, I've got some um, do I have videos? curly sign okay okay now here's a playlist right but let's suppose uh, I run one of these um, I'm trying to make a playlist Okay. Now, uh, so uh, whoops, I wanted that. Uh, so now, okay, now let's say I've got these two. I'll add those, but I don't want just Carly Simon. I also want, uh, you know, so I thought, uh, this this would be nice in my you know, like video playlist. And uh, oh yeah, I got some water orbits in here. Okay, now save as. Where did it take me? Popular music, right? <laughs> it's got it. If it was the current directory, I would easily have access to where I am. Now I forget how I got there. Where? where how did I get there? Where I was, right? So for a thing that uh, opens a file or creates files. Just use just the, use the current directory, right, for the last thing that was opened. All right. See you.